Well, here's my setup, my experiment with the lipo batteries and my solar panels. Uh, let me take you through the battery. I've got uh, 10 6S um, lipo batteries connected five in parallel through these. The balance cables connected together as well. So that gives me a set of 26 ampere hours. Same on the other side. And when I connect them together in series, it gives me 48 volts. Still the same capacity, or still the same uh, 26 amp hours, but double the voltage. All in all, that gives about uh, 1.3 to 1.4 kilowatt hours. And the whole thing weighs 7 kilograms, which is a pretty high density. It can take me 80 kilometers on a charge. Now I experimented with making some solar panels. And here they are. They're very light. The only whole thing weighs about two pounds or just under a kilogram. And they're wired like uh, this is negative, And they follow this path. Now I thought I'd leave these out so that I could rewire. These at the moment are in, uh, in parallel. As you can see, both negatives connected together. And what I could do um, is separate it here and here. Have another positive coming off this, and then this goes to negative. Then I could have four in parallel, but half the voltage, but more, more current. Um, now, so altogether, there's uh, 36 cells, and that gives about 20 and a half volts, so that's open circuit uh, voltage. And of course, the more current you take out of it, then the voltage drops to a point uh, where you it has a maximum power point. If you take out more current, then the performance will drop. Now my charger, so I'm really happy with it, but um, it's not solar panel aware. So it can't, uh, it, it doesn't know that it's being powered by solar panels, so it doesn't modify its current draw in, uh, in response. So what I have to do when I charge this up, uh, assuming that there's no clouds in the sky, there's one just come by right now, it's typical. Um, I increase the current charge rate to 7 amps here. And let's see how it performs. Now what it does is ramping up the current um, but it, as it can control the input current. Um, let's see it's going up to an amp now, that's only because there's I think the sun will be out in a sec. Uh, current's going up 2.8 amps, 2.93, 3, 3.2, 3.5. You can see the voltage and the current there. Uh -huh. That's the input. So any second now. I'm going to come back out again and we'll see that shoot up. Now 
uh, 10.07 is the minimum voltage that the charger will go down to. So at the moment it's trying to get 7 amps out of it, but it can't. So it's pulled the panel's voltage down. So our sun's just coming out. It's gone back to display mode, so batteries are at 24.63 volts and the current is charging at 4.4. Well, I know it can do more than that. The reason it isn't is because the voltage has dropped right down to 10 volts and it's drawing almost 12 amps from the panels. So let's just stop this. Set 7 amps. Let's charge again and watch what happens. So it's ramping up the current slowly and we can see the input voltage here is starting to drop and the maximum power point is about 18 volts and now it's continuing with the voltage dropping because it's trying to take more current out so let's stop it and do it again and this time you see what the maximum current it actually managed to get out of it. So that's six, six point one, two, three. Now it's going back down. And that's because the voltage is falling. It'll keep going down and then it'll stay at 10 volts. Now let's set this to 6 amps. And we can watch what it, what it will do. see the voltage coming down to 17 and it should slow down and stabilize Maintaining six amps. And drawing nine point three amps at sixteen point seven volts. Which isn't too bad. To the battery, that's that's almost 150 watts going into the battery. Now, problem is as soon as the cloud comes along, this voltage will drop, the current will go up, and it will stay there even when the cloud goes away. So, if the charger was had a modification to the firmware. It, it could operate as an MPPT charger and it, it's only firmware which is the solution um, so I don't really fancy staying out here for a couple of hours just keeping an eye on it trying to get every bit of juice out of it but um, let's hope there's a, another solution so the other one way would be to get another MPP device um, which can track the solar panel um, parameters and then feed this with a maximum power but everything seems to be geared up to lead acid uh, batteries and I'm not sure if it would work 
uh, without having a battery connected to them, so that's something I'm going to find out. Um, some has gone in a little. It's quite windy today, so it shouldn't be long. So then the current here has dropped. But it'll never recover, it, it won't be able to get back up to 6 amps again because it's fallen off the power curve now. So I really hope that Turnergy, that make this um, brilliant charger, if you want to run it off the mains, uh, I hope they could modify the firmware to be solar panel aware and then be able to track the maximum power point. That would be a, a really great thing. Um, also to have a, a bigger charger that I can charge this in one go because at the moment I have to do this in two sessions um, so one session for this side and then again for the other side and then when I want to use them I just connect them together in serial in series and then just um, use the output to go into the into the bike. Um, I think that's almost about it. My experimentation with with these, with this foam board, I mean they're very, very light. But the problem with that is that they also insulate. So these get extremely hot because there are like a, a, a mini greenhouse and also the, the PVC front uh, as you can see it deforms with the heat so even though they folded up nicely when I made them now they don't fold up quite so nicely um, but they still work and they fit in my backpack and I can take this and charge a, charge the bike in the middle of nowhere and charge up my phones and laptops and, and anything else. Maybe with a, an inverter as well I could run a portable fridge and hang it onto the bike, <laughs> keep the beer cool. Um, so they, this took ages to make, as about a week's work on and off. So they've got the connected together with three little tabbing strips um, we've got these bus bars here um, also with the foam board where these tabs protrude slightly downwards I had to make dug in little impressions for them to fit um, so that they will lay completely flat as you can see with the heat uh, they've actually they they warp with the heat. Um, it would be nice to use them without the without this. This one's a bit loose. Um, the great thing, um, and this, this surface is just amazing how it absorbs all the energy. Um, 80% as heat and 20% as electricity. Um, so it'd be good to be able to use this heat on the other side, maybe have some uh, liquid flowing uh, behind with a heat sink compound. Um, but anything that conducts heat usually conducts electricity. And I think one of the best substances that conducts heat but not electricity is mica. So if you could make solar panels that could be mounted on mica and uh, joined with heat sink compound and then on the back side of the mica mounts you'd have some copper pipe um, circulating uh, water coolant which you could be using that hot water to heat up a water tank 
So then you get a, a dual, uh, dual purpose solar panel which not only generates electricity, it generates heat which you can store and use and you don't have to use the electricity to heat up water which takes a colossal amount of energy. Uh, so that's just some, some ideas. Uh, a small amount of the, of the electricity from the panels could also power uh, a very small pump just to keep some movement uh, circulating and also increase efficiency. Uh, to keep the panels cool. But uh, as it is, even with this rather unoptimized setup, um, I'm still getting, I can still get 150 watts out of it. Now I'm just gonna, I'm gonna need to make some more. Uh, what I'll do, I'll just fold this up and you can see how it works. Much like a like a book. Now the materials that they use for the for the commercial panels are ETFE and PVA. Now what I would what would be nice would be to try and find some A3 sized sheets and give that a try. But they certainly won't be as light as this. Two pounds in weight, and I'll just put in a backpack and go anywhere. So I'm, I'm really happy with it as a, as a first experiment. It actually works, and I think the cost for about these was about a hundred dollars each, plus a lot of time and hair pulling. Um, I think next time I'll try and get some silver tape here because these gets very hot. As you can see, they deform. So, but it still works. Signing off.